How exactly did we get ourselves into this big mess? Oh wait, I think I know. Tonight, the interest only trap. Why thousands of home buyers are facing a debt time bomb. Do you think you fully understood the situation? Not really. We definitely bit off more than we could chew. If they didn't pay, they'd come after us. And if we couldn't pay, then the house got sold. We were always on the Titanic. We just didn't know how close the iceberg was. Is it too simplistic to say it's stupidity? I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments below uh, saying that. And I appreciate all the comments, but is it something else? Let's find out. At the moment, there are more than 1.2 million interest-only loans in Australia. In the final quarter of 2014, almost half of all mortgages issued were interest-only. Financial analysts warn of trouble ahead as the interest-only periods start to end and repayments jump to principal plus interest. Tracy Bowden meets two buyers who wish they'd been more cautious. We were hoping to be in by Christmas last year. Very stressful, very, um, I've ended up in tears a lot. This block of land in Sydney's outer western suburbs is the spot where 25-year-old Tegan Pick planned to build her dream home. It was uh, like the best thing ever. I was over the moon, I couldn't wait, like, I just, I pictured my whole life here, like, the next 30, 40 years at least, and really make it a home. Look, no disrespect to these young people. I was young. I didn't listen. I made, made mistakes. Um, well, I'm not too old <laughs> still, I'd like to think. But I mean, she wanted to spend her whole life, whole life, um, 20, 30 years here in the outer Western Sydney suburb with no um, uh, infrastructure no trains probably a, a last bus running at like quarter past seven in the um, evening uh, there's really not very much to do there but hey i mean um, what do you do when you don't know anything better um, it looks good to these young people uh, i can imagine that they were getting themselves into uh, a deep trouble here so if anything long term for these young people uh, i think um, they've dodged the bullet uh, that's just my opinion then partner needed almost seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars all right this is a problem starts i'm sorry to be interrupting i'll let you watch this uh, uh shortly but seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in outer western sydney suburb this is probably about 65 to 75 kilometers away from uh the sydney cbd i mean how's that sydney it takes you uh, off peak uh, with like fifteen twenty dollars worth of toll uh, probably takes you about an hour uh, real time it'll take you hour and a half two hours especially if you're not using toll uh, during peak hours or kind of semi peak hours I mean uh, how's that gonna get you anywhere and uh, not to mention there's no infrastructure there's no trains uh, very few buses they are very infrequent how do you get yourself a job how do you get ahead uh, when you live so far away they took out an interest-only loan. With no deposit, they borrowed 100%, with Tegan's parents agreeing to be guarantors. Her mother Kim was nervous but wanted to help. The prices were going up and up, and I thought if I could help them get into the market sooner rather than later, they might do better in the long run. Sorry, I have to stop. Prices were going up and up and up. This is fear of missing out. And this parent wishes all the best to her daughter and the ex-partner and you just can't blame him uh, but something's going on or something's happened that hasn't really allowed him to buy for, for a realistic price this price seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars what's a realistic price I say it's about three hundred fifty four hundred thousand dollars tops but um, we put out the equity in our house up as a deposit so if, um, if anything happens um the loan forfeits, well, they'll come after us, I guess, um, for the money. What concerns did you have? Did you think that was a bit of a risk? Because, you know, you did work hard for your house. Yeah, um, I did. And I thought um, it was a bit scary at first. Oh, so is he. Yeah. 
and I couldn't couldn't believe it. Like it was, I think it was a matter of weeks. Uh, yeah, it wasn't much of a wait at all. To borrow three quarters of a million dollars. Yeah. Just two people who don't know 100%. what they're doing. Hundred percent. Easy cash, easy easy credit. It seemed so easy, but it wasn't. After a series of delays, building hadn't even started when Tegan was informed the 12-month interest-only period on the loan was about to end. So this is, this is I mean, look, I, I have to find a, a funny side of this, and to be honest, I can because, and uh, call me absolutely uh, selfish, but it wasn't me who was in this trouble. So <laughs> they've got a block of land, they get three quarters of a million dollars um, from the bank, uh, interest only they haven't even started building the house and their interest only repayments alone expires and now they have to be, be pay, paying principal and interest i mean the house is not even there and it's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in the middle of nowhere in the sticks look this is gum trees this is the farms i did freak out a lot i started crying i called my mom and wasn't wasn't quite sure what to do at the end of the day, um, if they defaulted, they would chase them first. And if they didn't pay or could find a, a way to work out how to pay, then they'd come after us. And if we couldn't pay, then the house got sold. I don't think it's on the same scale as the issue in the US prior to the GFC. What I am a little bit concerned about, though, is that it's coming together with a whole bunch of other things to create a bit of a perfect storm for the Australian property market. So it's a perfect storm from the property market, but it's just not going to be as bad as it uh, was in the um, uh, real estate market in America, uh, where I think it pulled back in some areas like 30, 40, 50%. I mean, why do we always think that it's just not going to be as bad as somewhere else? We, we in Australia are a different subprime mortgage crisis in America in 2007, 8, 9. Why do we think we are protected from this? If anything, we got a much more perfect storm, storm here than anyway in the world. So my prediction is st stands. It's forty percent plus uh, pullback uh, peak to trough. There are currently more than one point two million interest-only loans in Australia. In the final quarter of twenty fourteen, forty four percent of all mortgages issued were interest-only. After a crackdown last year by the banking regulator APRA, that figure is now around sixteen percent. We're now coming to that crunch point where those people who took out loans back in 2015, a big chunk of them are now coming up to the point where they have to switch across to principal and interest. As those loans mature, economist Shane Oliver explains that the impact on the broader economy depends on how many people can't manage the jump in repayments. For example, on a half million dollar loan, they'd be $9,000 extra a year. Well, that's the big risk. Um, now they find two things happening. One, that they yes, they've got to switch across to principal and interest. Big increase in their in their in their monthly interest and uh, principal debt servicing bill. Um, but they're also finding the value of their property might be going down, and so that comes as another shock at the same time, which could then incentivise them to say, "Well, let's not stay here. I'm going to sell," which could then then have a snowballing effect causing more properties to hit the market and putting more downwards pressure on prices. Um, alternatively, it might be that they can afford it, but of course they then have to cut back on spending elsewhere in the economy and that acts as a drag on consumer spending. There was a, a lot of emotion, but it was shame, it was embarrassment about how did we, how did this happen to us? Yes, the, this is going to be a little bit embarrassing stories and this is probably the story that uh, a lot of other people can relate to because uh, being so young, like the first um, uh, young lady, uh, is not your usual and typical uh, buyer, I would like to think. Uh, it's everybody else that got caught into this uh, fear of missing out, greed and fear, uh, emotions uh, running where... Uh, even uh, you know the smarter people, the older people, the wiser people got caught up in this big mess. What what did we do wrong? Jane Turner and her family live in a small apartment in Sydney's inner west. 
But not long ago, they were in a spacious terrace house and owned three investment properties, two of them in Brisbane. The loans on all the properties were interest only. Our loans were set up on the basis that most of it was held against our property here in Sydney. So we were looking at the income coming in and the tax write-off and it was making a lot of sense that way. At the end of 2014, everything started to fall apart. Jane was made redundant, then the loans on the investment property started switching to principal and interest. When there was no more income to negative gear against and there were massive mortgages to pay, this is where it got not at all pretty. So we were, and we were always on the Titanic. We just didn't know how close the iceberg was. The treasured family home was put on the market and then they sold two of the investment properties. It was incredibly gut-wrenching and very, very stressful. You know, and another thing that happens here is that, uh, you know, you've got to sell the properties, some properties fall through, you buy another one, buy, sell, buy, sell. What's this? This is a transactional cost. This is kind of good for the economy. And um, uh, who's rubbing their hands? It's the government, real estate agents. Uh, and uh, some of it probably goes to legal and uh, building industry because they have to do all the inspections and other things, surveyors and that sort of stuff. So, I mean, it's a joke. So it was this beautiful old place that we had lived in for 23 years. It was our home. We were deeply invested emotionally in this place, but this was the one that had to go. Oh yeah, I want to live there. I, I like. I, I really just want to live there, and and not only that, I want to pay seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to build my dream home and spend my next thirty, forty years living there. Not. Building hasn't yet begun on Tegan's dream home, but she's now accepted she'll most likely never live here. She and her boyfriend have split, and the family plans to sell the property once the house is built. The interest-only period has been extended for another 12 months after Tegan pleaded with her lender for more time. Do you think you fully understood the situation when you took out the loan? No, not really. <laughs> not really. I, th I think we definitely jumped in a bit too quick and maybe bit off more than we could chew. Jane Turner is emerging from what she calls the worst time of her life. Is there a lesson learned here? Oh, yes. Probably about a hundred lessons to be learned here. What are they though? Would I tell people to be, you know, you've got to do your due diligence. You absolutely do. You've got to get a second opinion. And whilst I hate to say this, I think you've got to play it safe to an extent. Stay conservative. Too late for that now. Stay conservative. Uh, yeah, uh, everybody's asking these questions as to uh, what's happened. Uh, every uh, hundred dollars or thousand dollars is now being questioned uh, in fees, in, in everything else, but nobody else worried about it before. What am I talking about? Is that when people bought houses and real estate agents were charging two, three percent commissions and and you know the stamp duty from the government was always there, nobody complained because uh, you bought it for a million dollars, you sold it for 1.5 million dollars and then the next uh, buyer bought it for that 1.5 million dollars, he sat on it for three years, then he sold it for two million dollars. I mean, what's another hundred, two hundred thousand dollars uh, between friends uh, that you have to pay to the government uh, for stamp duty and, you know, fifty, sixty, maybe a hundred thousand dollars to uh, a real estate agent and other costs. Um, nobody cares. And then, uh, you know, uh, obviously capital gains tax if uh, it's an investment property so but now everybody's starting to ask which is uh, what's going to be part of my next video uh, where uh, a lot more homes are going to auctions there's a reason why real estate agents want homes to go on auctions because they know they can't be sold um, any other way uh, and they know that they're not going to be sold in the at the auction but they charge the um, the actual vendors uh, for advertising um, on those for those auctions whether the property sold or not so they've made their money whether the property sold or not they know it's a, a lot more likely not to be sold so they've got their cut and not as much as they used to but hey uh, it pays the bills in the meantime before this um, real estate route um, actually ends 
which doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon and i'm predicting like 2022 or something